Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Digital Dada Podcast. I'm Cecilia Maundu. I'm a broadcast journalist. I'm a digital security trainer. I work at the intersection of technology, human rights, and journalism. And today we are continuing with our series, the Sustained Series. So the Sustained Series is um, a, is about um, a project by Internews, which is called Sustain. Sustain stands for Sustaining Safety Tools with Analytic Insights and Networking. Uh, literally, in a nutshell, is about creating a sustainability plan for open source tools because we know most of the time open source tools are not are not funded so they are always looking for funding so how can we create a sustainability plan for these uh, tools and out of the six tool teams that we have today i have open wisp which is um, a team um, led by federico and federico is uh in the studio with me quote unquote federico welcome to digital data podcast Thank you for having me. Uh, kindly introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, and where you're based. Okay. I am a full stack developer. I've been working on OpenWiz for 12 years now. And we do what we do is we help organizations that need to deploy some kind of network. Uh, usually is equipment that allows people to access the internet but it doesn't necessarily have to be so. So we have organizations that need to deploy and configure and manage this network equipment that is deployed uh, across different geographic locations, and they can manage it from a central place. So that central place is OpenWISP. It's a collection of tools and libraries that is assembled into a web application that allows them to, to perform all the common tasks that this kind of networks require. I am based uh, between Italy and Paraguay. I am from Italy, I'm born in Rome. Um, I've been spending my last 10 years in different countries, a uh, little bit of Peru, a little bit of uh, Italy, a little bit of Spain, and here in Paraguay, where I'm now, which is really nice because it's very green. <clears throat> it's very green, there's a lot of, there's abundant fresh water and clean air, and people are really friendly. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this um, episode. Yeah, so let me get uh, straight to the question. So you are part of Internew Sustain Project, which is about creating mechanisms for open source tools to be able to sustain themselves. So the keyword here is sustain. What has been your experience so far in this project and what are some what has been the highlight of the whole project for you? So the project so far has been a great opportunity to push push ourselves, push the project, push myself because I in the last years I've been very focused on technical matters more than anything else due to the fact that the only way that I found effective for me that that I was able to to have to be successful with to fund the project has been to get organization, company and uh, municipalities to fund some work and also uh, provide them commercial support. This has meant that most of our efforts have been directed at tasks that they need, which is great because we, we always have, you know, very, uh, we are very close to what they do. So if anything doesn't work out for them, we, we are aware. So that keeps us the it has given me the possibility to uh, work and use the software that we write every day and always find out things that can be improved. However, there's also other aspects of an open source project that are more community oriented, that are more oriented at communicating what you do, which I was not able to prioritize because I was so busy, always so busy. So in the little space that I had after working, 
I was replying to the to the community, to the messages in the community, uh, working a little bit on the website, etc. But it was always like you know, like last thing, last thing. So we did a lot of great work in the last six years, really great work. But we haven't been communicating it. We are, we haven't. I haven't been putting effort to communicate all this great work that we've been doing. So this is something that Sustain now is it's helping us. Uh, like uh, they have, I I, fe I feel that with Sustain I've been able to have a little bit of mentorship, which I I think we all need to do. It's great because I if I feel like it's fi I'm finally able to have some mentors again. I do mentorship for coding. And I know how great it is because the guys, well, actually the, the coders, whether it's a, well, women or, or men, they, they love it. And actually a lot of people that we, we mentored now work at uh, tech companies, uh, big tech companies, Microsoft, Amazon, et cetera. And that's amazing. So I hope that that's amazing in a way, right? Mm. I always tell this story. It's amazing in a way, but on the other way, we need to find uh, the right amount of funding so that Hopefully, some of these people we choose to keep working on on what we do instead of going to work for uh, for one of these big companies. So, and, and that, that brings me yeah. sorry, uh, and that brings me to my next question because you mentioned the issue of funding. Um, as a member of the sustained cohort, how do you view the sustainability of open source projects, particularly in terms of funding and community? You talked about community. So how do you view the sustainability of open source tools from the angle of funding and the community uh, support? Yeah, okay. One thing I want to say is something that I see. I, I, I want to share my experience, okay? I don't want to talk about generic stuff. I want to talk about I like that. real. Yes. Okay. So for some reason, in the beginning, when I started rewriting OpenWisp, because it was something different before, then we rewrote it. At, at that point, the project started growing because it was more generic and it could be used in more use cases, so it attracted more users. There was a, a fair amount of participation. So, But now I feel there's a lot less participation. Now that the product is a lot better, there's a lot less participation. Like if I ask questions, like, hey, guys, uh, like now we're working on the FAQ frequently asked questions to put on the new website that we are working thanks to Sustain. Like, hey, anybody has any uh, anything to share regarding what we could put in the FAQ? Maybe some doubt that you have that you asked here. Nobody replied. Like, it's very hard to get participation on any anything, really. Uh, so that's something that we need to work on. And I, I don't have... A, a reply, a, a solution. But what I know is that we need to encourage participation for sure. And in some way or another, we need to encourage the community to participate. But we also need that. And then I also say, I need to say that probably in the past, there have been people who maybe would have liked to participate more. But because me and the core team, any everybody was so busy on their own things, maybe we could not give them enough attention Maybe they got bored. I'm not sure, but in any way, on one side you need to have you need to engineer participation. Once you get that participation, that engagement, you need to find ways to retain it. So ideally, we would need to have somebody who has some time to work on community-related projects, and we need to make it easier also to communicate because we use a mailing list, but mm, Mailing this, ma so having mails. different channels of communication. Yeah, also making it easier for people to reach you. Mm. So we are thinking about switching, for example, to to GitHub discussions. We were we wanted to switch to this course because many communities use it, but also it's like having something else to maintain, another system to maintain mm, that maybe it's not great for us right now. So we are looking for a solution we haven't decided yet, but yeah. So once you, you need to make it easy to reach you, then you, you 
you need to try to engineer and encourage participation, and then you need to actually care about those contributions contributions in some way, make them feel that they are they are contributing. And yeah, uh, so contributions is is are are key, right? And at some point, I also believe that whether it's with funding from organizations like Internews and others or whether it's from uh, work or commercial support or, or other means of selling services, some of that funding needs to be diverted to invested uh, in, in this task because you need to have, you need to reply to issues, you need to polish that, right? Some people just open issues really easily. Like some people just don't even read the documentation and just they, they just read uh, write issues, right? Ask questions on GitHub, which is not great, but I I guess that with some more effort there we can there's ways to, to work on that. You can write issue templates, you can do a lot of things, but when when you start having many repositories and different build systems uh, that deploy things here and there, your focus has to be that because you cannot be on the community and then your software doesn't work and it's not used in the real world. I, I still think yeah. making sure your software works and it's used in the real world and you have contact with the users who really use it and also support you because they need it to, they need that software to work so if something breaks they call you to fix it right that's imperative because without that you won't have a community so um right? you you mentioned the issue of having different channels for feedback because it is through feedback that you're able to know what the community desires uh at the same time you um talking about if uh, you can you can have a very good tool for for sure and if the tool is not being used then uh, i mean it beats logic why the tool uh, should be there uh, but i would just follow up with uh, another question when it comes to the issue of community how do you also get community uh, that is uh, for example when it comes to the issue of language how do you get community that doesn't speak for example open wisp is in english and we'll come to the question of localization how do you make sure that the people that you're serving can be able to understand uh, open wisp yeah that's a tough question for us because we we haven't we haven't committed in to translate much of what we do there's a little bit of translations mm -hmm. in some user facing web interfaces just that mm -hmm. because keeping a maintain that is work yeah right? it's, it's a lot not of work. only we, we have to keep in mind that writing software and its documentation is one thing then maintain it and evolve it over time as it grows that's that's tough because then people change and so somebody has written something and then somebody else comes and it's not the same person. So they don't remember how, uh, they don't remember all the intricacies. But yeah, I, I know some communities that have been able to to, to do that, they, that they are able to, to get more participation. And if you have a well-structured code, and you can extract all the text in translation strings. There is popular uh, software that helps translating. So basically, there's something called Transifex. Yeah, Transifex does a tools. localization with translation. Yes, yes, yes. And what they do is usually, uh, which we tried to do in the past, but I had to stop it because since we were growing, mm -hmm. uh, Having to maintain also the translations while we kept on changing the, the software and the text all the it's time. It's a lot of work. But once you have a certain stability, uh, having this kind of structure helps you out because you can have you can easily give access to people to write 
uh, these translations and and send a proposal so then you can review and accept them so each each uh, group bright uh, each group works on their own language so one group works on Spanish one work the group work on Hindi one other group works on another language and you gradually have more languages it all depends if you have I mean it all depends on the community right so if there's people interested in having that then it will happen okay sometimes I also believe sometimes I also this is I'm not sure if some people will agree with me but I also say we have to let things flow right one thing is us wanting something and and it's, if it's achievable we do it but then also the people around the community they also have to step in so i think our job is to give all the tools for these people to come and help put all the structure in place so that it's fair it's transparent and there's rules etc then if there's interest it will happen if not what matters in the end is that the tool that you're producing works and is easily accessible and usable by the people who need it. Then, of I, course, language can be a barrier. But yes. now with Google Translate and Chat GPT is a lot less of a barrier than before. Yeah, less of a barrier. But uh, both of them, that is Google and Chat GPT, cannot really be relied on fully for localization because you find some of the translations are not correct. Uh, so, Order. yeah. So let me move to my next question. What are some of the strategies or initiatives that you believe could improve sustainability of open source projects in the long term? And I, I like uh, one of the things you talked about is localization. You also included the issue of community. So what are some of the strategies or initiatives that you believe could improve the sustainability of open source project in the long term that you have learned throughout this project uh, sustain and I think I would like you to speak about uh, mentorship that you've had in this project that was um, initiated by Code for Science and Society which is a partner uh, in this project yeah so what what became clear during this this journey is that we had to put more effort in better communicate what we do, what value we we bring to the table, and our success stories, the great projects we we have done and the that are based on open wisp and still working and servicing users around the world. And also package all this information in a nice way so that we can also use it to look for more funding to basically sell ourselves a little bit better because that that part was not really uh, polished ah, okay. so if, if we if we are able to do that then this will definitely help to gain more users and uh, more funding so we've been focusing a lot of, of on the communication really these last six months. Yeah, I know. Uh, mm -hmm. putting, putting up together like a board of advisors, some people who have a stake in the project and can offer advice and uh, put their names on the new website and put together all this information. Also, we are working on a page which will list the the best use cases and case studies that of projects that are based on open wisp with of course the, the user has to consent to give this information that's, yeah that's why it takes a little bit to to gather but yeah a page which will mention all this work that we've been doing and some of these projects are also willing to share more details about how they're using open wisp so it's, it can be a nice showcase for anyone who is interested in in seeing how open wisp use is used and what it can do whether they want to use it themselves or whether they are trying to understand if they if it's worth to fund right so it's it's uh, 
we have two goals with this work that we are doing. One is for users, and one is also for possible potential funders who, who are evaluating whether it, it will work to fund us. And of course, we think it is, so we need to explain it better. So we've been working a lot on, we've been receiving mentorship on communication, on uh, governance, on, uh, so now we're getting mentored uh, also on funding. Uh, and through that, now we are working on user experience, on uh, the website, on several, as several visual aspects. My personal opinion is that after this, it would be great to repeat this kind of work, dedicating it once the website, and oh, we're also working on documentation, on improving the documentation. It's really important because our documentation was scattered around different uh, repositories and modules. We had one website, and from that website, we were linking different GitHub repositories. So now we are working on bringing all that information in one website. It will take some time, but uh, we, we are working on that. So once we have all of this, and also the new release out, which we hope to release this month or next month, once we all we have all of this, first of all, it will be great. I mean, I've been wanting to do this for years. I always pushed it. Uh, I always delayed, so I'm really happy. I have to thank Sustain. I have to thank you all to, for helping us to do that. Because I we are glad. Sometimes I was thinking, I was thinking maybe we'll never do it. You know, like how how, how am I going to be able to to work on this if if there's so much work to do and I'm always busy? But this gave me like forced me to to dedicate time, schedule time and work on it. And also also the the funding incentive it, and the help from the consult consultants that are helping us out to achieve all of this and giving us advice, professional advice, right? It's great. So but once we all do all of this, it would be great also to do it on the actual application, the user interface of the application. That's Going to be the next. Goal As the that next we're going goal. To work on. Uh, uh, let me say, uh, as part of the sustain team. Uh, we are very happy to hear that uh, you found a very useful. Uh, information that you're actually implementing right now in your project. And it's also good that uh, you talked about um, mentorship because it's something that we're adding to the sustainability guide, uh, the key role that mentorship plays when it comes to the open source, uh, 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 sustainability of open source tools. Uh, let me move to my next question. Now that uh, with this experience, what advice would you give to open source developers particularly in terms of ensuring their long-term sustainability and how can they proactively address sustainability challenges from the onset? So suggestions that can help Developers, to... yes, yes. When it comes to the issue of uh, sustainability and how can they deal with some of the challenges that uh, they, can, uh, they will encounter along the way? Okay, well, first of all, what I say to everybody wants, wanting to work on open source projects, unless they are already funded, or unless they have already funding or they're employed by some foundation that is already successful, but if they are bootstrapping projects, it's re it can be really hard. So one thing that you need to do is focus, initially focus on making sure that your tool works and that you use your tool in your everyday work mm -hmm. and you love what you do and you love your tool and you put that love into your tool. And not only in the tool, but also in its documentation, in its presentation. So you need to work on presenting. Your so tool. what I'm hearing you say is uh, you must have a passion for the tool that you have created. Yeah, you, you, you must, in some way or another, you, you, you must be really attached uh, to, to the 
kind of problem you're trying to solve. It, it must be something that it's you like it and you're passionate about. Yeah. Because you will be doing that a lot. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. so yeah, I understand. I understand what you say. It's the same thing, you know, even the work that you do, you must have a passion for it because then that gives you an opportunity to go above and beyond. So yeah, that you need to use it for your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. You need to, to build something that you, you yourself use it because if you are able to use it and you like it, then maybe somebody else will too. And that somebody else may help you also with uh, suggestions, et cetera. So at that point, the community starts growing. You need to listen to them. You need to, especially when you see multiple people pointing to the same issue, you need to take note and, and schedule time to, to see if you can improve that as soon as you can. But then you need also to work on the presentation of your tool and allowing people to easily install it, deploy it, etc., and use it. Then as soon as you get to a point in which you have something that works, you have a good number of people who use it, then you, you also need to, to start thinking about okay, how how can I how can I work keep working on this every day, ensuring that I have enough money to live, pay my own expenses, and maybe then also hire some other people who are going to help me out. Then the the response to this question is tough, right? Because it, yeah. it really depends on the tool. Some tools are more uh, oriented toward uh, private companies. They can be used by tech companies who can pay money if they if you find a way to to sell them something. Some other tools are more used by non non profit, uh, non government organizations that are doing some humanitarian work. Uh, some tools are more used by the government and so on. So I think I personally think uh, like a mix, a mix strategy can yield nice results. Uh, personally, I, I've always uh, at some point I started well actually. I was employed to work on OpenWay, so I didn't start it. I was working on something very similar, which is why they hired me. Uh, so my idea was to, okay, take the ideas that I have and merge it into OpenWay. That's I, the famous rewrite I was mentioning before. Uh, at, by that time, uh, the company who originally hired me stopped, lost, lost their interest because mm -hmm. they thought that they, they saw OpenWay mainly as a hotspot management platform, a Wi-Fi hotspot. So they thought Wi-Fi in the future will not be so relevant anymore because now with 4G, et cetera, it's easy to access the internet without a hotspot. So, but I was working on making open with something more than a hotspot platform, but different kind of networking use cases. And I believed in it and I kept working on it also while basically I, I had to find a way to sustain my work. So I tried to copy a little bit the model that they had, which I think is good. Like you, you can, if there's companies or any type of organization which has any type of funding, uh, whether it's public or private, doesn't matter. But if they use it, then you can help them at doing something that if they did it on their own, it would take a lot of time but if they do it with you, it will take, it will be very fast because you know the tool and you know. So you sell your knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to make them save time and to get some funds to keep working on the project. Mm -hmm. Then public funding or no profit can help you work on, on something that is bigger, right? Because when you work with single organizations, they will not want to pay for maintenance of mm -hmm. the of the code on the community, on the website. That's all things that you have to do. So you have to invest your own time and money or if you get help from organizations like uh, Internews or others, there's a lot of out there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been really great just looking at all the possibilities that there are and, and getting help from, from the members. But, oh, I mean, another suggestion I can give 
talk about your tool, go to conferences, present it. Yeah, it's very important. Mm-hmm. Right? Then there's different things one can do. There's really, really many, many. But it all boils down to making sure that your project is known, make sure that your project is well presented, at the best you can do. Then you can get mentors that can help you do it better. There's always room for improvement. Make sure that your tool works and, and you work on the tool every day to improve it, keep improving, put love in it. And then it's it's a matter of also becoming smart and, and try to sell yourself, your service, because you cannot do everything for free. You cannot. You will you will stop. You will have to abandon it because if you give everything for free, unfortunately, we live in this world that if you start giving everything for free, people will take it. They will say thank you. And maybe they will even make money out of it. Like for example, Open Wisp is, is something that people can use to, to sell up services. And they will do it. And they will not pay anything. You will do all the work and you will not get anything while somebody, somebody else is, is benefiting from it. it. Yeah. So you have to be smart and know that my tool is going to be used by people in need, but it's also going to be used by people who make profit. And that's the nature of it. We have to accept it. But I have to think about ways so that, okay, I put limits in place. Like you put limits with your family, with your friends, right? Yeah, if you putting... have family friends. I, I see what you, yes, health, boundaries. Health, boundaries. health boundaries, health boundaries. You cannot kill yourself for your opens because then there's people who will go as far as kill themselves to work on open source. They work, I don't know, 15 hours a day. Like, come on, guys. You cannot do that for a long time. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. Yeah. No. And thank you so much for mentioning that. It's very, very important to know like where people need to put uh, boundaries, especially health boundaries, because also if you're not careful, you can become a slave uh, to this tool. Yeah. So moving on to the next question. So as we come to the tail end of this conversation, uh, looking ahead, what do you envision for the future of uh, Open Wisp after Sustain, the project is over, which is coming to an end? And I'm talking in terms of its sustainability. Uh, that is, do you have other funders on board? What is the future of it when it comes to sustainability after this project? Right now, exactly right now, we we got accepted again to the Google Summer of Code, which we do regularly. Mm-hmm. So we will have a couple of developers who will be working on one project each. So that will give us a little bit of That's room very to good. keep uh, investing in new features or in improvements of, of existing features. And of course, we still have a lot of work on the commercial support. That's great. But I also want to keep looking for uh, opportunities like this one to keep working, as I was saying. Like, uh, we will launch the new website, new doc, new release, and then it's time to actually look at, prepare like a public roadmap and get more people on board, more, more organizations on board to, to work on that roadmap because some, some, items of this roadmap that we've been discussing and many people have been proposing and giving us feedback on. So we know that we have to do a lot of work to to get where we want to go. So some of that work mm-hmm. we reached we reached the point in which some of that work will require a lot of effort. It will require months or even a year of iterations between UX and and development, uh, UX design and development. So we need, we we want to. What I want to do is put down all all of those ideas in writing, and at least focus on the most important ones, and look for funding with the help of of all that we learned uh, with sustain, and also we have. Uh, some consultants that are giving us advice regarding funding, how to get funding. Mm -hmm. We got in touch also with a UX agency 
called Ura Design, which we also know that work with Internews, which they I know that they do some uh, work with open source that we are exploring collaboration opportunities with them to do UX research. So by leveraging these networks, this network of contacts, by leveraging also the work that we, we have done with clean insights to collect statistics that we are collecting now proper statistics that can help us to know how many instances are, are running uh, every day. So with, with all this information that we will have, use it to uh, perform, inform decisions, uh, and get help from experts who have already have a lot of knowledge and experience with funding to to get more funding to work on these roadmap ideas. So that's that's the next step for us. It seems so uh, the daily, yeah. mm -hmm. daily will keep going anyway, but this is the new the new big goal that that we have. Seems Sorry. like uh, there is a uh, there is a lot planned for Open Wisp, and uh, we're looking forward to see where. It takes you and all the best, Federico. Thanks. So to the last question, what is um, the one thing that you would want funders like DRL, who are the funders of this project, to know? What would be your message to funders? My message is that these projects are useful. So it's definitely important to keep investing in, in tools that can help people around the world who are in need, who have a specific need, uh, which is usually basic human right, which could be uh, need of communicating, need of accessing the internet to educate themselves, uh, need for education, need for freedom of speech. So it's definitely useful to keep doing this. And it's a small investment compared to all the money that is spent on a lot more destructive things. So I think it's a good good work and it's worth to keep doing it. I'm afraid it will it may be uh you know uh as as they may want to review spending they may also decide to to cut this and I mean I I, I can live with it I can accept it but we, we have to be honest about the fact that a lot of money in the world, public money, taxpayer money is spent on destructive things. So we have to ask ourselves if that has produced anything, it has improved things or not. So I, I would ask that kind of question and try to keep at least a little bit of funding for this kind of, projects that work on helping human rights and basic needs. So what I'm hearing you, you're trying to say that they need to put aside more funding for such initiatives. I mean, for me, even maintaining this kind of funding would yeah. be nice. Mm -hmm. And if they could put more, that's great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, Recognize the, the importance. Recognize the importance. Uh, regardless of the political spectrum, right? Regarding of the, the people in power who have different uh, way, uh, ways of seeing things. But this is, this is really useful. Because in the end, open source, open source is something that helps organizations all over the world and in the US actually and even if we look at the statistics of mm. open Wisp, if we look at the statistic of open Wisp, most of our traffic comes from the US mm. so even even the business sector benefits from from open source tools from having healthy open source tools it's not uncommon that uh, vulnerabilities are discovered in in systems of big companies uh, security vulnerabilities because some library that is very widely used but nobody funds it so the developer cannot work on it anymore and it just stays uh, unmaintained 
people keep using it, but some vulnerabilities, security issues then are exploited and then they find out. Once they find out, they decide to, to help. But it would be great to help the developers before we get there. Mm -hmm. If we can find a way to do that, that would be great. Thank you so much, Federica. Is there something that you would want to add to this conversation that you feel that we might have missed out on? I want to thank the Clean Insights team, the, the, Guardian, the Guardian Project, for their help and mentorship uh, in uh, helping us to collect metrics, usage metrics in a privacy-preserving manner. Uh, that's also something important that it was always something that I thought we should do, but I always pushed, delayed it. So we, we've been able to, to get that done. It's great. I'm, I'm sure these metrics will be really, really useful to assess the progress on how, how OpenWisp is, is improving, right? Because the metrics will, will give us this will we'll speak to ourselves, right? If the metrics improve uh, over time, we're doing good work. If not, uh, if they don't improve, we, it means we need to change something. So that's going to be really helpful. And we didn't really touch a lot uh, this subject here. So I wanted to thank them. Well, thank you so much. And um, I'm so glad that you joined in this conversation. And I must say I've learned um, a lot from you. And I'm also glad that you mentioned some of the positive things that you have picked in this uh, project. One of it is I hear you uh, mentioning about creating visibility for your tool. I think that's one of the things that uh, developers in this space or people who deal with uh, open source tools need, really need to look at how do you create visibility because the more you put it out there, the more people are able to know about it. So Federico, thank you so much. And uh, again, it's, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. Welcome, Cecilia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in this uh, episode of um, Digital Data Podcast, where we are doing the Sustain podcast series. Uh, Sustain is stands for Sustaining Safety Tools with Analytic Insights and Networking. is a project by Internews and is funded by DRL. And the main agenda is how to create a sustainability plan for open source tools. So thank you so much and see you on the next episode.